Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Today is uh, Saturday, April 2nd, year of our Lord 2022. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to our Daily Fountain devotional today of the Anglican Church of Nigeria. How are you and your families? And how has been the work of faith in your life? The Almighty God has brought us this day to consider the topic called a plot against Jeremiah. That is our devotional today, a plot against Jeremiah. And the text is Jeremiah chapter 11 from verse 18, reading on to chapter 12, verse 6. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our family members that are gathered around our tables to seek your face and to hear your word today. Speak to us the words of encouragement and give us strong conviction to be able to stand against all adversities. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A plot against Jeremiah. Jeremiah was that prophet of God in ancient Israel, whom God called to speak to the children of Israel that were in sin and rebellion against God. It was through him that the Almighty God predicted that there would be exile of the people by the foreign powers, and that after the exile will come restoration and this Jeremiah spoke truth to people, spoke truth to power. He follows in the pattern of other prophets like Nathan who confronted David against his adultery, also like Amos who spoke against the cause of Bashan and other people who were rebellious in the society, like Elijah who spoke against Ahab and Jezebel, and so for this reason he was hated. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you will recall, he also was hated for speaking the truth. This is a plot against Jeremiah. Why did they plot against Jeremiah? Because he spoke the truth to the people and he prophesied to them, just as we are looking for men of God today, women of God today, church leaders and political leaders who will speak truth to power to tell them that what is going on is not right and to also tell them that the Almighty God expects us to be very righteous in all that we do. In this particular context, what happened to Jeremiah? I will link it eventually to what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ because at a point in time, something very, very ironical happened. Jesus Christ was presented by Pontius Pilate. This is Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the King of the Jews, who healed the sick, who raised the dead, who fed the 5,000. And on the other side, this is Barabbas, the murderer, the armed robber, the terrorist, the rapist. Choose one. Who do you want? The whole world. Gathered at that time in Jerusalem said, Barabbas, Barabbas, we want Barabbas. What do I do with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Who, what do I do with the good man, the sinless man? They said, crucify him. The world has always preferred the Barabbas, always crucified those who are of the Lord Jesus Christ. The world has always hated light, always wanted to be on the path of darkness. That is the context generally and theologically, spiritually, of this particular thing we are dealing with today. Look at that particular Jeremiah chapter 11. These were the words of Jeremiah talking about his experiences in the hands of the Jewish leaders who hated him for telling them the truth. I start reading from verse, verse, verse 18, Jeremiah 11. And the Lord has given me knowledge of it, and I know it, then thou showest me their doings. God exposes the plans of enemies to us. God exposes to us all the plots of the kingdom of darkness against us. It was just like Elisha had a revelation of what the king of Sarah was planning against Israel, because when the prophet is in the house of Israel, he stands as a security for the people. Nothing happens without God revealing it to his servants, the prophets, and his friends like Abraham. He does that. So Jeremiah, don't forget, when Jeremiah was about to start his ministry, God said to him in Jeremiah chapter 1, you, Jeremiah, I have ordained you from your mother's womb. Before you were born, I knew you. Before you, before you, when you were still in the womb of your mother, I had done your ordination. So he was a predestined prophet. He was a very committed prophet who was used as a specimen by Almighty God to reach out to the people. And so he says, I have divine revelation. And God has given me knowledge of it. And I know it. And you showed me their doings. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. And I knew not that they had devised devices against me, saying, let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. Can you imagine? 
Somebody was a prophet telling the people righteousness. They are saying they want to cut off the tree. When they cut the tree, they cut off the leaf, they cut off the fruit. There are people who want to fight against us, not only fight against us, fight against our legacy, fight against our children and grandchildren. They are not satisfied fighting against us. They want to fight generations after us. They want to fight the good works that we have done. This is the work of the kingdom of darkness. I knew it and I saw it. I am like a sheep being led to the slaughter. That is exactly the way Nigeria sacrifices good people who want to help this country. They kill their heroes and they celebrate their fools and those people who destroy them. Those people who have destroyed this country are the ones who are celebrating. And that has been the pattern of the people they don't want. You put somebody in a, in, in a school, put them in a university, put them in an establishment, they do good things, they will hate them. It is the wicked master that the servants respect more than even the kind ones. That has been the nature of man. This originated from the corruption of man at Adam's fall. God said at the time of Noah, I regret I have made man because the imagination of the heart of man is continuously evil. And so the natural man is wicked, the natural man is ungrateful, the natural man is very, very, is very is, he tended to do evil. It is the regenerated man. Ezekiel was told, I will give them a new heart and a new spirit. I pray for you, my dear brother and sister, in the midst of the darkness of the society, may you be of a new spirit and a new heart. God will make you different from the other people. This was said of Jesus Christ like a sheep led to the slaughter. He didn't open his mouth. It was the lamb of God slain for the sins of the world. We are sheep in the midst of wolves. That is who we are in this country and all over the world. That is what he's talking about here. He had that experience. He knew that this was going to happen. He said, this is who I am. And from verse 21, they were telling him, why are you speaking the truth? We don't want you to speak the truth. Why don't you change your message? And then you can be able to enjoy our favor. Now in chapter 12, Jeremiah says, Righteous are thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore does the way of the wicked prosper? He goes on that way, and he's talking about the same experience. Almighty God, they are doing this evil against your church, this evil against your prophets. They are killing your prophets. They are hitting the truth. But ironically, God, you are a God of judgment. We are holding you responsible on account of your word that can never change. You are the one that says that, look, if it appears as if the righteous are prospering, this is just for a while, that's going to be a day of the judgment. It is comparable to a man who has chicken and is feeding the chicken every time. The chicken is prospering, but there is a day when the chicken is going to be slaughtered for consumption by the same people taking care of them. So we do know that there is a time of judgment. All those who have benefited from the blessings of the devil, there is a day of slaughter for them to receive their judgment, even in the hands of the master who fed them. That's why we don't take anything from the kingdom of darkness. We don't go to the devil to look for children because we are barren. We don't go to the devil to go and look for money because we are jobless. We don't go to them to enter into covenant with the kingdom of darkness. That is exactly the crux of this matter. Jeremiah stood upon the promises of God, upon the unfailing judgment of God, and he kept on asking, God, how come that these people are prospering? How come they are doing well? They are going on with impunity, and it seems as if things are well with them. So their hearts are set that, look, after all, things are working were with me, Jeremiah kept on talking about it. He says, look at the last portion there. He said, for how long shall the land begin to mourn? Verse 4. And the herbs of every field begin to wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The beasts are consumed and the boss because they said he shall not see our last end. They are going on and they are destroying virtually everything around us and they are saying that God cannot see. But God sees. So Jeremiah says, I submit myself unto you, O Lord. I want you to be the one to vindicate me and to judge this particular matter. My hope is in you. This is exactly what we are seeing in the country and in the world today. Let's go to the devotional now. Sometimes our stand for God can cost us our lives. In our scripture today, this was the situation that the prophet faced in his own time. The people plotted to kill prophet Jeremiah, not because he did anything wrong, not because he committed any crime, simply because he prophesied in the name of the Lord. As a result, the life of the prophet was in danger. And in response, Jeremiah called upon the Lord, and the Lord answered him. The Lord will answer you. The Lord will answer me. The Lord will answer the church of God. The Lord will consider the blood of the innocents that have been shed in this country, and he will answer us. In this country today, we are in dire straits. You can imagine even the current experiences. First scarcity in a country that lives on oil, the oil that God has given to us free of charge, we drill it. We don't have refinery to refine them. We have to sell them off and then go buy them at a higher price. And we can't even afford to have them. 
and now people are in trouble, and now we are talking about the future of this country, and people are killing, people are destroying, people are embezzling, they finish all the money. In the midst of people suffering unemployment, poverty, inflation, hunger, breakdown of law and order, insecurity, some people are still living as if life is normal. They are still flying all over the place. They are still going abroad to celebrate. They are still taking stupendous amount of salaries. And they, do, are not, they are even oblivious of the crisis and the dying of the people. And this is like anarchy everywhere. Is God not seeing all these things? The Almighty God sees all these things. And God will answer us. That's what he says here. Jeremiah called upon the name of the Lord when they were plotting to kill him for doing the right thing. And he answered him. I do not know maybe you are here and you had been gracious where you walk and the evil people who want to be corrupt because you don't join them, they want to attack you, cheer up. Jesus has overcome the world. In the world, the blessings of the Lord will come for you. The righteousness of the Lord will be for you. Your horn shall be exalted like the horn of a unicorn if only you stand on the path of right. Darkness and light are at war. Darkness can never overcome light. We are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. A city set upon the heat can never be hidden. Cheer up and continue to do the work of the Almighty God. Do your calling, even though your life may be at risk. Do your calling and speak the truth to those people who need to hear the truth. Do not conceal the truth. Do not compromise. Do not be intimidated. It is because of fear that people are not able to call the government to order, call parents to order, call children to order. Some parents can't even control their children any longer. In Christian homes, you see children dress, dressing like as if, as if they have no home training. They are almost virtually naked. Christian homes don't do that. The world following bad fashion, we don't follow them. We must speak against that. And that was the pattern of the Old Testament prophets. They spoke about idolatry. They spoke against prostitution. They spoke against fraud. They spoke against exploiting the poor. They spoke against unfaithfulness to God. They spoke against worshiping idols. They were very courageous. All of them suffered. Stephen was stoned to death for their saying that he was telling them to repent of their evil way and that he saw the Lord standing on the right hand of the Lord of Jesus, of the Father. They stoned him to death. Look at Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down. See the way they treated Amos. See the way they treated most of the prophets. See what they did to John the Baptist. They cut off his head for telling Herod that he has taken the wife of his brother. The world hates the truth. So if you are going to be fighting against evil, against sin, against oppression, be ready to be persecuted. That is what we are learning from the life of Jeremiah. So as a result of the life of the prophets, that he was in danger, and the response of Jeremiah was that he called upon the name of the Lord, and the Lord answered him. From the experience of Jeremiah and the general knowledge of the word of God, we discover that our lives may be in danger when we take a righteous stand for God, whether at work, in the society, or in preaching the undiluted word of God, or in defending the Christian faith. There will always be opposition and danger, but God's word assures us that in the midst of the danger and conspiracy against our lives, as long as we stand for God and he is for us, no one can destroy us. Can I hear amen? No weapon fashioned against you will ever prosper. You can fight the truth. You cannot suppress the truth. Let the lie run for 20,000 kilometers. The truth will take off and overtake it one day. All those who dig graves will be buried in their grave. All those who destroy the things of God will suffer for it. All those who rise against the men of God like Korah, Dothan, Abiram, the ground will open up and swallow them up. God will always give the victory at the end of the day. God is saying, as long as you are consistent on the side of the Lord, don't look at the opposition. Don't look at the appearing as if they are getting away with it in impunity. Don't look at the fact that the righteous people seem to be prospering. We don't follow the multitude to do evil. The blessings of the Lord, they make it rich and they add no sorrow to it. The battles of life are not won simply because of the physical situation we see. The battles of life are won on the basis of the will of the Lord in our life. He said no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. The battle is not ours, the battle is the Lord's. Brethren, be encouraged. The Bible is the same yesterday, today, forever. Our God is the same yesterday, today, forever. As he defended those who stood for truth in the past, so will he defend you. Do not lose your faith. Nigeria will survive. The church will be revived again. The right message will come back to the pulpit 
it again. All those who are making money in the name of the Lord, the Lord Almighty will deal with the false prophets and the genuine children of God. We find succor. And Nigeria, our lives, our future, our marriages will survive again. All those who have repaid our goodness with evil, the Lord will fight on our behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. God's word assured us that in the midst of the danger and conspiracy against our lives, as long as we stand for God and he is for us, no one can destroy us. Therefore, let us like Jeremiah stand and speak for God. No matter the danger, God will always save his people in such circumstances. Did you hear that? God will always save his people in such circumstances. Put your hope in God. Speak the truth to wherever you are. Don't join them to steal. Don't join them to give negative confession about this country. Respect the leaders in authority, but tell them the truth. Wherever you are, tell people to do that which is right. If you have to suffer for righteousness sake, do suffer for righteousness sake. They beat the disciples and the apostles of Jesus Christ for preaching the gospel. They were happy that they were even found worthy to follow in the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ, their master, to be beaten for the gospel. We are not afraid of persecution. The blood of the Matthias is the seed of the church, said Tertullian, and the church father in those days. We are ready to suffer for Christ. We are ready to be persecuted. We are ready to do the good thing. But at the end of the day, all things will work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his promise. Don't forget what the devotional say. If you are on the side of God and God is on your side, think about that. You may think you are on the side of the Lord. He may not be on your side. But if you draw near to the Lord, he will draw near unto you. If you are sure that God is on your side, that God knows you, he sent you on this assignment, then speak what he asks you to speak. Did you remember the dream you had? Tell that person and warn that person. Did you remember the word of the Lord? Tell that person. What you have read in the Bible and what you have observed is right, correct, evil around you. That is the way we were brought up in the society. In African societies in those days, if a child misbehaves in the community, whoever was nearest to that child as an elder would discipline that child, and the parents would come to thank those families. We all raised children together by telling them the truth, Pearing not the rod, we spoke the truth. That's the spirit of the prophets. God is no respecter of persons. Moses was the greatest man in the Old Testament. Who saw the back of God? Who parted the Red Sea? Who brought ten plagues upon Egypt? And at the end of the day, he didn't make it to the promised land. So we must, as prophets of God, make sure we are right and we obey God and we speak the truth in all situations. This is a word of encouragement to you that please God has positioned you wherever you are Take on the Bible, take on the truth, take on courage, be bold as a lion, and speak the truth. God will fight for you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for the devotional today. We thank you for the encouragement that goes to your people. That one with God is a majority, and we are where we are because God put us there. As the light of the world gives us the grace and the courage to speak the truth, to depart from multitudes going into error, and to stand for righteousness everywhere we are and not to be patterned when people persecute us, not to be surprised when they betray us, not to be surprised when they attack us for doing that which is right, for being Christian. Give us the grace to be proud to be Christians. Give us the grace not to hide our identity. Give us the grace to be proud that we have moved away from darkness into life and to say that, yes, we are proud and we are good Anglicans who believe in God, who believe in the Bible, who believe in righteousness. Give us the grace to be persistent and consistent and to make it to the end. And at the end of the day, Lord, in your mercy, give us the reward that those prophets got when they labored and suffered for you, that when the trumpet sounds, we will make it to heaven, not us alone, but also as for us and our house. We will continue to serve the Lord. Thank you very much. We'll see you again on another day. Daily Fountain. Be blessed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 